Caitlin Clark continues to get hate and abuse from other WNBA players, making everyone wonder if there is something deeper going on. Things have gotten so bad that even NBA players like LeBron James are chiming in. I think for her, the one thing that I love that she's bringing to her sport, more people want to watch. More people want to tune in. I saw for the first time that they had, they had a chartered plane for the first time in their league history. You know, they flew private. That should be celebrated in his own right. What LeBron is referring to is the fact that before this season, WNBA teams flew commercial and could only charter flights in limited circumstances. Last season, they could charter during the playoffs for back-to-back -back games requiring air travel and for the Commissioner's Cup. Recently, the league announced that they would be introducing a new chartering program. As the league previously announced, we would be phasing in the program at the start of the season and can share that beginning May 21st, all teams will be flying charter to games. Now, many people credit Caitlin Clark for this change. In fact, there is an entire term dubbed the Caitlin Clark effect as wherever she goes, the ticket prices go up. Las Vegas Aces, the wildly popular champions, are moving their July 2nd game against Clark's Fever from their home to a larger 18,000 capacity venue. The Los Angeles Sparks originally planned to play their first five home games at Long Beach State due to renovations at their usual stadium. They moved a trio of contests, which includes a May 24th meeting with the Fever from the collegiate facility back to the arena they share with the NBA's LA Lakers. Gilbert Arenas certainly sees the upside of Caitlin from a marketing perspective. With her in the league, five games into it, we sold more merch than us all of last year. <clears throat> no matter how we feel about the attention she's getting, our is being sold. People are watching us now. The fact that she's making the league more popular for the masses, it's benefiting you guys. Clearly, Caitlin has been doing some great things for the WNBA. However, the reaction from other WNBA players has been strange. A recent clip went viral where Sky player Kennedy Carter seemingly shoulder tackled her for, well, no good reason. And Clark. I mean, that's clearly a foul which was called. The question is, will they call it? Unnecessary. Kennedy Carter, they call it an away from the ball foul because it happened prior to the inbound. So then anybody can shoot the free throw. Afterward, Kennedy refused to make any comments about Caitlin. This incident was so bad that you had guys like Shannon Sharp calling out the WNBA players for targeting Caitlin. That's not basketball. Mm -hmm. I, what, 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 her, uh, 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 Angel, uh, Angel Reese getting tangled up. Yeah. Angel Reese trying to block her out and she hip checks her to the ground. Yes, That's sir. basketball. That's bull jive. That's yeah. bush league. Yeah. Now, you woman enough to check the woman and she ain't got the ball, but you ain't woman enough to answer questions? In the NBA, players also get targeted, but it's in a more friendlier manner. For example, a lot of young rookies want to dunk on LeBron James because that would be an awesome highlight clip for them. Or when Wemby came into the league, Everyone wanted to dunk on him because, well, it would be great. But no one really goes out of their way to harm or injure another player, which is why it has been so strange to see the women's reaction toward Caitlyn, who seems to be simply playing the game and not doing anything extra. Kevin Garnett took a different approach than Shannon. He saw this as a sign of respect and believed that these women were afraid of Caitlyn. Watching Shorty, Caitlyn Clark go through shit, I'm watching all Man, rookies, you're gonna go through some shit. And guess what? When you're in, when you got the when bulls you out in, your back, yeah. yeah, when you win, it's gonna come with some shit. Yeah. Yeah. Ain't nobody hitting y'all with the uh, uh, with the step back in the high. Yeah. It's a compliment. Yeah, you fear. It's when, a sign of listen. respect. It's Meanwhile, Jeff Teague went on his podcast and clearly said that the WNBA players are flat out hating on Caitlin, even though she is uplifting the entire game of basketball. But it ain't even that part for me with Caitlin Clark. It's like what the people say afterwards. Like, Shorty, like, what she do good? Just shoot threes? It's like, nah, nigga, she got y'all charter jets. <laughs> nah, that's facts, <laughs> bro. She got eyeballs on y'all game. Like, yeah. what are you talking about? And but 
you know it's real hate. Like, that's a real hate moment, bro. Like, you just... Now, speaking of hating, Angel Reese has been Caitlyn's rival since their college days. Reese got the best of Caitlyn one year, and the following year, Caitlyn got her revenge. Both were then drafted to the WNBA in the same year. Reese is one of the reasons why many considered the 2024 WNBA draft to be one of the most stacked drafts in history. However, all the attention is seemingly going to Caitlyn, and that might be rubbing some players the wrong way. Reese made sure that everyone understood that she was part of the WNBA's growth as well. And just looking at that, like, I'll take that role. I'll take the bad guy role, and I'll continue to take that on and be that for, the, for my teammates. And if I want to be that, and I know I'll go down to history, I'll look back in 20 years and be like, yeah, the reason why we watching women's basketball is not just because of one person. It's because of me, too, and I want y'all to realize that. Like, it's not just because of one person. A lot of us have done so much for this game. Well, sounds like some jealousy. But it seems like other players have an issue with the amount of eyeballs that are on Caitlyn. The Tusa Bali believes that the media is essentially painting a picture of wherever Caitlin Clark is in a league of her own, when in fact there are plenty of great players. However, she does acknowledge that Caitlin is great for women's basketball. One type of greatness against the other greatness. There's just so much more to the WNBA than Caitlyn, but Caitlyn is the face right now, and that's also good. She's selling out gyms. Why would you hate against that? We had a sold out home opener. I think it was a practice game, like it wasn't even serious. We benefited from that because now we have all our fans there and they're excited. But not all players have been so welcoming. WNBA legend Diana Taurasi straight up told her that she was in for a rude awakening. Reality is coming. You look superhuman playing against some 18-year-olds, but you're going to come play with some grown women that have been playing professional basketball for a long time. Something similar happened with LeBron James when he first entered the league. Even his teammates were downplaying his initial impact. But eventually, they all came to their senses and realized that LeBron was going to be an all-time great. Maybe the women are going through something similar. Some legends do have sympathy for Caitlyn. Sue Bird argued that Clark must feel the most pressure in the league because she has the weight of the WNBA on her shoulders. She thought it was a bit unfair to put that much pressure on a young player, but at the same time, Clark earned that pressure thanks to her legendary college run. Now, One thing that has been interesting to see is the NBA world's reaction to all of this. Maybe because they are a third party, but they can see that Caitlin is being treated unfairly by the WNBA vets. In fact, Charles Barkley went on television and told women to leave Caitlyn alone. You women out there, y'all petty, man. Hey, LeBron, you 100% right on these girls hating on Caitlyn Clark. Y'all petty, girls. I expect men to be petty because we're the most insecure group in the world. Oh, you are. Y'all should be thanking that girl for getting y'all ass private charters. Now this might have backfired as since Barkley made these comments, Caitlin has faced even rough defense and many players have spoken out against Barkley. To be fair to them, there have been many great WNBA players who are pushing the game of basketball forward. Caitlin just happens to be the one who can take it to another level. But it seems like she won't get that chance. At least not yet. Caitlin was left off of the American women's basketball Olympic team. It's almost as if they were appeasing the WNBA vets and showing favoritism. This confused the entire basketball world. Michael Jordan and the Dream Team famously used the Olympics to make basketball a global game, and many believe that the women's organization is messing up by not including Caitlin. Paul Pierce doesn't have the most rational of takes, but the fact that he is the voice of reason should speak volumes about the subject. You claim you want the women's game to grow, and then you keep the most popular girl in women's basketball off the team. How do you grow internationally and domestically if you don't put her on the U.S. team? It just makes the most sense. Sometimes you have to say, hey, you guys, this is bigger than the game, which it is. But it seems like Caitlin is taking it all in stride. After a rough start to the season, she has started to ball out. Clark surpassed 100 points and 50 assists, becoming the fastest rookie to achieve this in WNBA history. She was awarded the WNBA's Rookie of the Month in May, averaging 17.6 points, 6.6 .6 assists, and 5.1 rebounds per game during that month. It seems as if her haters, who are clearly jealous of the attention Caitlyn is getting, 
are going to have to contend with her greatness for years to come as she continues to live up to the hype and even surpass it.